All right. So we made this brush, and then we were struggling to find ways to define it, right? And we made it using a, one of the default brushes in PhotoP, but then customizing its settings. So there's a difference between the brush shape and the settings. So what we drew here is actually just the brush shape. So to define this as a brush shape, I keep it on one layer. And then I go up to Edit. And I scroll down to where it says Define New. And I click on Brush. And I think it helps to flatten it all into one simple black and white image before you do this. So Define New Brush. Now that brush, you see, automatically becomes my brush that I'm using. And I can start playing with it. I can play with the size. Notice I can't play with the hardness because there's variation already in it. But right now it's all locked in one angle. So it kind of looks very digital and that's not my intention. So now I have to then change the brush settings and especially the tip dynamics. I'm going to up the jitter, I'm going to up the minimum diameter, I'm going to up the angle. You can see a, a preview of it here. I'm going to up the roundness. And now when I use it, it's going to fill in like that. Then I can look at some of these other options. So scatter means it will cover more ground as I paint with it. So kind of like an airbrush. And you can make it cover a lot of ground and then jitter between how much it does that, <laughs> like that, to kind of fully texture something. So scatter is not something I'm going to use right now. That would be for kind of filling in large areas. And then color dynamics is pretty interesting because what this can do is play with variations on the color that you're painting with. And though it's a little extreme right now. You can see all the different grays, but it looks because of my the shape of my brush, it really adds that texture and that dimension. So I'm going to take the brightness jitter down a little bit, maybe to about 15. And I can try that out. Yeah, I like that. So there's little variations on the black. I'm going to even though this doesn't apply to black, I'm going to do the same thing with the saturation jitter. We'll just mean sometimes it's more intense, sometimes it's less intense. I'm going to do just a little bit, only 5% with the hue jitter. And then the foreground background jitter, I'm going to have at zero because that, that means it mixes it with whatever that background color is. So in this case, it would be black and white. So if I jittered it, that would just swap in black with white all the time, which is not something I want. All right, so I'm going to use those settings. Now, to lock those settings into the brush, I find the brush in my brush settings. There it is, my custom brush that's 997 pixels big, a lot bigger than the other options because I can gives me more of a size to play with. But I'm going to click on this arrow, and then I'm going to say, define new. And that brush now, this one at the end, which is 183, because that's or 63, because that's the size I was using it at, now it has all of these brush settings built into it. So now I feel safe. That I can go back to my assignment. And now, in the assignment with the brush tool, I can scroll down and I can choose my option, and it will be that brush with all the settings that I designed. And even though I have it set here to be pressure sensitive, because I'm just using a trackpad, it's not very pressure sensitive. 
So that's how it works with black. And then as I'm painting, is I want to pick a different color, I still stay on the brush tool, but I hold down Option. And I can choose a color from my reference images. And because I have the, the color dynamics changing a little bit, you can see that I have that texture in the brush already. Professor, what is that command key on a uh, Windows? The command, it's just uh, the Alt button. Gotcha, thank you. Yep. So then I can play with the opacity of my brush at any given moment, and I can start blending the colors together that way. And by using similar colors at the edges at different opacities, I can soften edges even though I don't get actual control of the hardness of the brush, if that makes sense. All right. And then the only other tool I'll use sometimes is the eraser. And I like to use the eraser with the same kind of brush, but at 100% opacity. The eraser is different than painting white. The eraser is actually removing paint, right? Like scraping it away. So now I'm going to start doing a rough, loose scape or rough shape painting, right? And I want to use some interesting colors. And I can play with the size of the brush. But I'm going to start pretty big, like I'm doing. And I'm going to hold down the Alt key, the Alt Option key, and just cover some ground. And I want to keep it at a high opacity. So I'm going to keep it at 100% because this is basically just my base painting layer. And I'm already going to start with things like the hair. I know I want something that's pretty, pretty wild in its colors and in its um, experiments with color. So I'm going to start putting that down just in the base painting layer with these big strokes. You might decide on something very different. But think how, how much more useful this is as a, a base layer than just a solid black shape. And because I can't control the, um, the size of my brush just through how hard I press, every, because I'm using a trackpad instead of a, a tablet, every time I change the size, I need to go up here and, and scroll. So I switched to a slightly smaller brush now. This is still hair. It's pretty safe to experiment with, getting a sense of kind of where some of the shadows might be, with the cooler colors, get the hairline in there. And even though it's all one even weight, because I'm not using a stylus, because of the the broken edge of this paint brush that I've designed. It doesn't look so rigid and digital. And I'm also trying to establish what my darkest darks will be. They're not going to be solid black. And I have to go beyond my reference because the top of her head is cut off in my one reference. So that's where I can use the other references to kind of help me understand 
how that hair might move around. How we, I might shape the face with it. I think I want the face to be on its own, so I'm going to have the hair kind of come from behind like this. And my sketch is just there as a guide. And because under the brush settings I have color dynamics, it gives me this nice variation. even when I'm just using a single color. And I'm stealing those colors from my different references. Especially when it comes to something like skin tone, there's a lot of different colors in skin. There's greens, there's pinks, there's browns, there's grays, there's blues. But with this first pass, <laughs> notice I'm not zooming in very much at the beginning. I'm just putting down rough paint. This first pass, I'm still doing it at 100%. So I'm not blending colors yet. Then I can always use my eraser. to cut back. My eraser, I keep at 100%. It's removing, whereas my paintbrush, I'll start to use at, in future layers as I refine the painting at lower opacities. Cheekbone. jawline. And as you put color down, you can always like steal from yourself. Show the jawline there. Shadow of the eyebrow, the eye goes. And just try not to get too detailed too quick. And I, I control that by not um, zooming in until I've blocked out all of the big black shapes. Just so it's memorable, I call this step Kill Whitey because you're just working against that white background layer, trying to block in a lot of pixels that you choose, fighting against the empty space. And you can always paint with white as well. But because I have that that color jitter to it with value and saturation and hue, my white won't just be a boring white, it will be, you know, a combination of off-whites, which is pretty handy. And my finished painting will probably cut off about here. So remember, we can always crop and cut off at the end. So I have a lot of territory to experiment with, should I need it. It doesn't matter if you're a great painter or not. 
This is about trying to get used to 